services. One of the major, major constructs introduced in 1.12. And they're all about simplifying and, I don't know, robustifying large-scale production deployments. And yet, I probably just made up the word robustify. But, like we said in the theory intro module, services are all about uh, declarativeness. Got grief, I'm making up words like crazy here. But also the concepts of desired state and actual state with a form of reconciliation process running in the background, doing all the heavy lifting in the background required to make sure that actual matches desired. Anyway, we manage services with a new subcommand. And you know what? I'm sick of PowerPoint, so let's just dive in. So I go docker service create. I'm going to name it psite1 just because plural site one's a bit hard to type. I'm going to map port 8080 across the entire swarm to 8080 inside of the service. Now, more on this in just a second. Before that, I'm going to say here, let's have five tasks in the service. Replicas, tasks, containers, same thing, yeah? We'll be having five, thanks. And I'm going to deploy this image as the app or the service. Hmm, bit of a long name. Well, let's see. Okay, looks good but we can check with the new docker service ls. Okay, there's our service psite1, and five out of five of the tasks are already running. Now, I know that was insanely quick. The reason for that is because I've ran this earlier in testing, so I already had the image downloaded on every node. If you're doing this for the first time, well, it's going to take as long as it takes to pull your image from Docker Hub or wherever your image is stored. Well, if we dig a bit deeper with docker service ps and then our service name ah oh, let's make it a bit smaller sorry okay well if you've got superhero vision maybe you can see that all five tasks replicas containers call them whatever you want right no matter they're all up and running so let's just step through the output every task or container gets its own unique id then, fortunately, it also gets a friendlier name, which is basically the name of the service that it belongs to, and then it gets a task number added to the end. So, service name dot task number, or I sometimes hear people call it slot number. Well, then we see an image name. All tasks in a service use the same image. I guess unless you're doing a rolling update or something, which we're going to see shortly. We can see which node a task's running on, and actually you might notice Ours are nicely balanced across the swarm. Then we see the desired state of the task and the actual state. They match. Okay, the world is a happy place. Then there's a column at the end for errors. We've also got Docker service inspect as well. This is good for drilling into the config of your service. We can see things like down here the image we used, then a bunch of settings that we didn't bother with. But further down here, and I think you'll find this important in the real world, the network config. Now, actually, yeah, I should have said this. It's really easy, and you know what? Most of the time I always do this. I don't know why I didn't do it this time. I usually start my services on their own overlay network. Just because overlay is the future of networking, right? When we do stuff in later lessons, I'll make sure to use overlay networks. And this is really cool, right? But it's all a bit dockery, yeah? I want to see what the app looks like in the real world. Well, when we exposed port 8080 for the service, we basically said any traffic hitting any node in the swarm on that port is going to reach our service. So, let me pop over here and we'll grab the IP of one of our nodes. Now, I know this is AWS, right? But all I'm doing, right, is getting an IP that I can hit one of the nodes on. So, I'll have this one. And let's see what happens if we hit it. It was 8080. There we go, right? That's our service. Now, let me try and be clear here, because I know I'm in AWS, and that's not going to be the case for everyone. So, all I've done here is I've taken the IP, or actually, I've taken the DNS name, yeah? But I've taken the IP or the DNS of any of the nodes in the swarm. Then, I've hit it on port 8080. Now, if you're running something more locally, maybe like on your laptop or a physical server on-prem or something, you just need to hit it on whatever IP or DNS it resolves to. Now, if you're logged on to it locally, 
you can even hit localhost or 127.0.0.1 or, or whatever, right? As long as you're hitting it on port 8080. Now, the reason for port 8080 here is just because that's the way I built this particular app and it's how we define the service. So hopefully that's clear. Now, we're hitting the service on Manager 1 here. And we know that Manager 1 is running a task or a container for the service. So, what would happen if we hit a node in the swarm that's not running a task for the service? Only one way to find out. So, let's run that Docker service PS again. And apologies again for the size of the text here. But if you grab your magnifying glass and you look through the output here, it's the IP ending in 162 that's missing. And that's Manager 2's IP. So Manager 2 is the one that's not running a task. So if we come back here and we grab its DNS name, again, remember, if you're not in AWS, just grab whatever IP or DNS you used earlier. And if you logged on locally with a browser, just hit it up on localhost or something. But if we open up a new tab and we whack that in with port 8080, same result, we still hit our app. Now this is despite the fact, and let me be really, really clear here, despite the fact that we just hit the one and only node in the swarm that does not have a container running for the service. So we literally can hit any node in the swarm and we'll always get to our service. Now then, and man, would I love to get more into this here, but it's beyond a getting started course. But you know what? Behind the scenes, there is some great network magic going on, making sure that you can expose a port for a service across the entire swarm. Then, as we saw a second ago, any time you hit any node in the swarm on that port, you're going to get your service. But as well as that, you're going to get your traffic load balanced across all of the tasks that form the service. So, let that sink in, right? A fully container-aware load balancer that Docker are calling the routing mesh or the routing mesh. And you can totally mix it with your traditional load balancer. Like, so I'm an AWS, right? So maybe I'd use the classic form of an elastic load balancer. But whatever environment you're in, if you've got existing load balancers, you can still have them in the mix. So they would load balance traffic across the nodes in your swarm. Then it would let swarm as the next layer use the built-in routing mesh load balancer to further balance the load across the containers in the service. It is a work of art. Though right now, okay, it's early days, so it's not layer 7 aware or anything like that. But who knows what the future will bring. Now, okay, I'm kind of like, I'd love to go into the detail, but it's too much for this course. But let's do this instead, right? A quick visual rep of what we've done. So... We spun up a new service. I asked for five instances of the container in the service. We've got six available workers. So five of those workers got a container and one didn't. Boo hoo. I also said map port 8080 on the entire swarm to 8080 inside of each container that's forming part of the service. So up here against the entire swarm, all six nodes, even though one of them isn't even carrying load for the service at the moment, we get a port mapping. So taking 8080 coming in and mapping it through to 8080 on each of these containers. Now, I'm only showing that mapping on the end node here so that the diagram doesn't get even uglier. But effectively, every node gets this mapping here. Ah, now, hmm, the detail's a little bit beyond this course. I'm hoping at some point I'll get around to doing a swarm mode networking course where we can get into all the lovely details of kernel IPVS, sandboxes, ingress networks, VXLANs, all that good stuff. But for now, what we need to know now is we can hit any of these nodes in the swarm on 8080 and get sent to a container that's running as part of the PS1 service and all nicely load balanced. That means any external load balancers down here, they can balance across all the nodes, even this one here that doesn't have a container for the service, and then the swarm-wide routing mesh container aware load balancer will balance across all of the containers in the service. And I know I said it was a beautiful thing. Yeah, looking at that picture, that is not beautiful. But it works and it is great. Well, that's cool and all, but no rest for the best. Next up, 
you're going to put our desired state to the test and we're going to see how to scale the service.